Hey guys, I just wanted to show you these, uh, uh, another repurposing video, we'll call it. Um, down at the library, they ordered, uh, these play cubes for the kids. Two of the panels came in damaged. It looked like maybe the forklift had hit the, uh, box or something. But you can see where this one is splintered right there. Hopefully you can see that. And then this piece here was beat up pretty good right there on the edge. So I'm going to take and uh, file these down, hit them with some sandpaper. Kind of make them look decent, but more importantly, uh, I want to make them safe for kids to play with. Uh, so they were just going to throw these out, and uh, of course you know me, the repurposer. I didn't want to see them go to the trash. I know they were probably pretty darn expensive. I'm not sure what they paid for them, but uh, yeah, they were just going to toss them out, and I couldn't see them go to the trash. My sister-in-law has a grandbaby, and... Uh, she's got a friend that has a baby that comes over all the time, so I figured I'd pick these up and bring them home, make them safe for the kids to play with, and give them to her. But anyway, let me uh, move the tripod and the camera a little closer, and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, before I get going on the video, I just wanted to point out to you that I'll be using the bucket cord my light stand which yeah one of the things I really like about that light that uh, IV stand is that it, it I can move it up and down and it goes gosh it probably goes eight feet tall right now I got it as high as it'll go because the door there's open and limiting the and I haven't decided which light I'm gonna use I'm gonna have to put the camera on the redneck tripod and see which one works the best but yeah then I'll also be using the redneck tripod there So anyway guys, I'm just going to show you this one. Uh, the other one is, uh, it's just straightforward wood repair. The only thing that got beat up on it was one of the corners, or one of the uh, edges. But this one here has, uh, of course you can see the wood damage here. This piece here, it looks like it popped up. One of the red balls even got into the blue into the blue ones there. I don't know if you can see that. But uh I'm not gonna try to try to move that back over. I'm just gonna fix it to where it's safe. Fix this here. My plan on this, of course I don't have any of these red plugs that match, but I do have a black one so I'm just gonna drill that out a little bit bigger and glue that black plug in there. Just to hold that down so that those uh remaining balls don't come out but anyway the way this one was supposed to work is the red and blue strings each have a magnet on the end and of course the magnets are missing I have no idea what happened to those but I've got this uh, deal here that's got three magnets on it so what I'm gonna do is cut it in half take that center magnet out drill a hole in each end so that you have a, a magnet for the red and a magnet for the blue. Anyway, to take care of this wood repair, actually I'm not even repairing it, I'm just making it safe for the children. I'm just going to scrape off the major uh, anything loose, hit it with a rough grit sanding sponge, Anybody who knows me knows I'm a big fan of the sponges. They just work real nice. They're easy to use. They're easy to hold on to. And this here, guys, is one of the rare occasions where you actually do want to sand against the grain. Just to get anything loose off of there. And 
And there's one of the drawbacks to repurposing, guys. I also repurpose my sanding sponges. And sometimes it'll have a nasty color on it. In this case, black. So I'm going to switch over to sandpaper. Get all that black off of there. At this point, not a huge deal. You can see as I'm sanding, that black's coming off. It's going to take quite a bit more sand than anyway, just to get it all smooth for the kitties. Anyway, I'm not going to make you watch me sand this whole thing. We'll come back when I've got the sanding done. Yeah, so anyway, guys, let that be a lesson to you. Um, I didn't really, I can't say I repurposed the sanding sponge. I reused it because I didn't purpose it for anything other than what it was intended for, which is sanding. However, the last thing I sanded with it was uh, flat black, I believe. So, uh, yeah. In this case, it didn't cause me any extra work because I was sanding it smooth anyway. But if you're really worried about what it's going to look like, and in this case, obviously, I'm not that worried about what it's going to look like. I'm just worried that it's safe for the kiddos. But anyway, now at this point, I've got it all to where everything loose is off of there, nothing splintery. Uh, now I'm going back with the grain with an 80 grit and what that's going to do is that's going to smooth out and kind of round over this edge here it's going to get rid of some of that black that's still left in there from that used sanding sponge and it's also going to get rid of the the marks from where I sanded cross grain what I'm going to do after that I'm going to go ahead and fix the other items the magnets and this plug here before I put any finish back on this. And that way it'll all be done and I can set it aside to dry and it'll be ready for her to pick up or we can take it up there to her or whatever. But anyway, let's see. Um, let me dig out my tools and we'll work on that plug. All right, sorry about that. I forgot to turn on the camera. <clears throat> but what I did is I drilled this out right here where the uh, where the old piece of the plug was broken off. I just went ahead and they're drilled all the way through, so I just drilled it out a little bit bigger. Um, got rid of that. Now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm going to drill it. Looks like a 3 8 inch bit uh, because that plug appears to be a 3 8 inch plug. So hopefully we're going to do this without, without chipping up or breaking that plastic. Actually, let me throw some tape on that real quick just to be sure. Maybe, hopefully, that'll keep it from, from chipping that plastic or cracking it like it's done over here a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, I always wear my gloves. If you'll notice, my hands are beat up enough, and that's wearing gloves. So I can't imagine what my hands would look like if I didn't wear gloves when I'm doing this kind of stuff. looks like it did. Yeah, look at there. Then 
I don't want to stick this in yet. Oh, yeah, that's going to be perfect. Like I said, I don't want to stick that in yet. I want to turn this up and get rid of that sawdust inside there and kind of clean it up a little bit first before I seal it all up because I'm going to glue that plug in. Again, I'm doing all of this with the exception of the magnets. I'm doing everything to this for the safety of the children. The last thing I want is for that plug to come out and one of them to swallow it. Same way with those little balls. That's why I'm going to go ahead and repair this. I don't want those little balls to come out and kids to choke on them or whatever. But anyway, uh, I'll be back in a minute. All right. While the camera was off, I tipped it up and blew out the, the sawdust from under the plastic. I did go ahead and sanded the back side of this. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's supposed to hang on a wall, so I don't see any kids sticking their hands behind it. But it did splinter, obviously, like wood does, you know, when a bit goes through it. So, yeah, I did sand the splinters off of the back side of that. Now, to hold this little plug in, I'm just using good old stupid glue. All right, <clears throat> I started tearing that uh, magnet apart. Uh, my idea was that I was going to cut it in half and use one half on each side. But as I started cutting it apart, it was obvious that it wasn't going to come apart without a fight and without leaving jagged edges for the kids to cut themselves on. So, another repurpose here. Some old cabinet knobs. And what I'm going to do is, uh, these magnets are 3 eighths of an inch, just like that plug was that I just drilled a minute ago. So with the same bit in my drill, I'm going to drill that, just basically countersink it just enough to sink this uh, magnet into it. Instead of using super glue, which worked fine for that plug because I don't think anybody's going to be messing with it. Uh, for these, I'm going to go ahead and use epoxy. Uh, Two-part epoxy, it's going to be stronger, less chance that this is going to ever fall out and one of the kids is going to get a hold of it and try to swallow it or stick it up their nose or whatever. Uh, we'll come back in a minute. Alright, now I've got my holes drilled to where the magnets sit down in there pretty well flush with the surface got my two-part epoxy got some uh, quick setting epoxy i like the five minute stuff of course this is one to one so you use equal parts of each you know the deal mix it according to the instructions on whatever epoxy you have you guys know how it's done Anyway, I always just use a old magazine page and a 16-penny nail. Works real, real good on these small jobs like this. Get my epoxy all thoroughly mixed. Stick some down in the knob there. Drop the magnet in, and then I'll just use the penny to push it down in there. Hey, not a great idea. The penny is attracted, or the magnet's attracted to the penny. That's thinking there, Tim. Anyway, uh, so we'll let that set up. I just pushed it down in there with my finger. Because obviously, 
pushing a magnet with a nail is brilliant. And do the same thing with the other one. And of course, wipe off any excess. But there's what you have. Let that dry. I'll probably just drill a hole, I don't know, kind of through the side here. I don't know, somewhere to, to tie these on. And then I don't even think, I mean, this came out so smooth here. I don't think I'm even going to bother putting a finish on there. Uh, the kids are just going to beat the crap out of this thing anyway. Uh, the worst that's going to happen is something could get spilled on it. I don't think it really even needs a finish other than to protect it from spills. Uh, because it's, I mean, it's fine. Nobody's going to get splinters on it or whatever. I think the kids will have a blast with it as it is. Uh, and when she goes to hang it up, we can always just hang it on the wall with that part to the top. Or even, I mean, I guess we could put it with that part to the bottom and I hang it down low so it doesn't show or they're not playing with it or whatever. But anyway, there it is. I'll show it to you once I got the knobs drilled and put on there. But there's the, uh, the repair I made there. I did kind of get some super glue around outside the hole, but I'm not worried about it. The kids are going to have a good time with it anyway. And it's functional. It works. And I'll bring you back here when I got the knobs installed and it's ready to go. And there we go, guys. It's all done. Uh, <clears throat> I went ahead like I said I was going to do. And I drilled the holes through the knob. Just used a 3, uh, what size did I use? 5 16 bit. Drilled it from the back side here at an angle. Just drilled through. Ran the little piece of rope stuff there through, tied it off, pulled on it, made sure it was good. But now, the kitties will be able to play with the magnets and the balls. Just exactly the way that it was designed for. Man, that's kind of harder to do than I thought. But anyway, there you go, guys. Repurposing. I don't know if you could call it repurposing or salvaging it from the trash. Uh, I mean, like I said, it was supposed to be part of a cube. Um, and now it's just going to hang on the wall. So I suppose you could call it repurposing. But anyway, I guess this is kind of the repurposing video. I used a repurposed bucket that I put a cord in, a repurposed IV stand for my lights, a repurposed halogen light stand for my redneck tripod, uh, some repurposed uh, knobs from an old cabinet, and of course repurposed magnets. I have no idea what these magnets were from to begin with, but they were used on something before. Uh, so anyway, there you have it. A toy for my uh, grand niece, and like I said, I I did the other one off camera. Um, it was just sand in the edge, just like I did here, and you guys already watched me do that. So, anyway, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Uh, I guess the biggest lesson to learn is, uh, yeah. Don't use a sanding sponge that you use to do black and then try to do clear coat on anything. That wasn't a great idea. Uh, but anyway, to recap how I fixed that, I just, uh, I did sand it cross grain with 80 grit. Then I came back with 80 grit with the grain just to smooth everything out. And then I came back with 220 just to make it even a little smoother than that. 
If I wanted to, I could tape this off and shoot some clear coat on there, but like I said, I'm not even that worried about it. Um, but anyway, there you have it, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something, like I said. If you like my videos, go ahead and like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I hope you all have a good one.